Oh, hi, it's me, Meatweave, and welcome to the first uh, Neep Meat video where I use my voice to make voice sounds. In this possible series of videos, I'm going to be doing demonstrations and showing stuff. Uh, they're not exactly tutorials, but hopefully they'll potentially be useful. I don't know. Maybe I'll also put some stuff which hasn't been released in them as well. I I'm just going to do any old thing, and you're just going to have to deal with it. Okay, so this is the first video, and I thought I'd show something that's incredibly important for the early game, for getting started, that sort of thing, because I know that's the sort of thing that people generally struggle with. Um, so I'm going to show, of course, how to determine the energy per unit volume of a food fluid using the metabolizer. Here's a metabolizer I made earlier. It has a stomach and two segments, which gives it a combined out uh, throughput of eight droplets per tick. Um, power output depends on the input fluid, and also the number of segments. Segments, segments, segments. Um, so what I want to do is create a machine that uh, takes a specified input number of input of number of droplets of fluid um, into the stomach, and determines the total energy produced um, by that amount of fluid, and then uh, says it to you, or something. I don't know. We'll see. So I'll start by slapping some fluid pipes on here, and a fluid rationer, which is going to be the, the fluid input. And I'll set this to 1,000 uh, droplets. Uh, the number doesn't really matter because we're going to be uh, um, we're going to be mathsing it. Um, but 1,000 should be uh, burned through fairly quickly, so the tests won't last that long. I'm also going to fill it up with a bit of the delicious animal feed. Doesn't that look absolutely delicious? Don't you just want to guzzle and gulp that down right now? Don't you? Yeah, mm, you're gonna be eating that in a second. Have fun. Um, and that's it. No, that's not it. Um, we can use Neat Bus as of Neat Meat 0.17 to control the fluid rationer. Um, it has two inputs, one for the amount of fluid to eject, and one for um, the actual eject command. And whenever um, it receive, whenever what the any value other than zero is written to the eject port, it will um, eject the specified amount of fluid into the pipes, as you'd expect. So we can configure all this with a button. Um, I'll set that to eject. Set the its output to eject, and when we press it, it will write um, the value of one to all addresses in the network uh, with a matching address, which matches that address. So if the address matches, um, ah, that was a mistake. I said if the eject the eject matches, then the fluid will be addressed into the container, as you just saw there. And I press the button, it went in. It's brilliant. And that will empty in a moment. Yes, it's empty. Very good. Okay, so now we want to do the actual vascular part of it. So I'll get some vascular conduits here and pop those on there like so. Uh, as um, added in 0 0.17 is the vascular network sensor, which is going to allow us to use Neatbus to query the total in a total available power in a vascular network. Like this, using this port here. Uh, okay, it's fine. Uh, so that will tell us the instantaneous power output of these two things, but we want to find the total energy, um, and we can do that by summing this value every tick using an integrator. This is not that kind of integrator, it's the, the other, int it's the numerical integrator for Neatbus. Um, completely different thing. Um, very unhelpfully named, but it's fine. Uh, so we want, as the input, we want uh, network capacity. And we also want to clear um, the stored value every time we press the button so that we um, get the exact fresh result each time we press the button and perform a test. Uh, so now we can view these 
uh, parameter the, the values using some gauges, and I will send uh, the total power, total energy, to this one, and the instantaneous power output to that one. And I shall set the maximum value to, um, let's say, 1 times 10 to the 6 esoteric joules. Um, we also have some new features in here, uh, such as unit, which is just a piece of text appended to the number, and metric prefixes, uh, which we will see in a moment. Um, unit as ej, and name uh, total. And for this one, this, uh, this will be called uh, instantaneous. Unit is going to be ej per tick, and maximum, let's set that to uh, 2000. Okay, uh, I think this is it, so I can press the button. Uh, it's producing 720 ej per tick, and the, the that's getting gradually summed until it finishes at 90,000 90, ej. Um, so we can conclude that there are 90,000 esoteric jewels contained in 10,000 uh, droplets, um, which gives us 90, if I can brain correctly, which gives us 90 esoteric jewels per droplet. Um, important to note is that when converting to um, vascular power from transient ichor, um, or ichor, I'm not sure how to pronounce that word, it's fine though, um, there is a multiplier of 150% applied, uh, which is supposed to uh, simulate an efficiency increase of using vascular power. <coughs> but wait, don't go! We can make the system even worse, I, I mean better! We can introduce computer. computer! As we all know, the introduction of computer, computer into any system automatically makes it more reliable, more intuitive to set up, um, reduce the number of failure modes, and all sorts of other great things. Um, so I'm going to write a simple Ford program to replace all to replace the button, and um, add lots more lovely complexity, as we will see. So I will first um, start by disconnecting the button um, from these things um, by breaking it and replacing it, um, and then I will set its output to test. You could have actually just changed the output port address, but I'm I'm spontaneous like that. <clears throat> uh, so in in here we can do some other stuff. Uh, what kind of stuff? Uh, let's define a word. The word test, and this will be the word that um, runs the, the testing procedure. Uh, first, we want to write one thousand uh, droplets to that thing. So we can do that with the nb write instruction to eject um, amount, I believe is the name of uh, the port, the port, the input port's address, and then we want to send the value of 1 to um, the actual eject port, and that will also um, do the integrator. Um, here, it will set its clear input to eject. No, it will send... it will make it clear its data, um, like the button did. Um, so now if I just write test here, the word will be executed immediately when we run the program, and we will see the stuff happen. Yes, it's working, just as before. Excellent. Uh, so now we can um, find a way to make this run when we press the button, and for that we can use interrupt requests. So I will get a uh, PLC NEEPBUS interface, place it down there, and set its input to uh, test. So when the button is pressed, this will emit an interrupt request, which can be listened to by the PLC um, using the iHandler instruction here. And we can redirect that to test. 
uh, to the word test. So this will be executed when we press the button. There's a little bit more that we have to do before that. So first we need to enable interrupts. I enable, and then after we set up the handler, we need to wait forever until an interrupt occurs. So I wait, and then after the interrupt has happened, this function has been this word has run. Uh, we want to restart the program. So just loop back down to there so that we can get back to the I wait instruction. And then I will um, say E just to get a bit more user feedback when we press the button. So running program, press the button, E. Wow, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that absolutely fantastic? The computer truly is indispensable. Uh, now all that we need to do is enter an infinite loop after a short delay to give things uh, time to start going, because if we enter, enter the loop immediately, there might be a chance that um, I mean, the whole purpose of the loop is to wait until the power output of the metabolizer drops to zero. Um, but it will be a zero initially, so the tiny delay can't hurt just to make sure that it is uh, correctly risen. Uh, so we can, for the loop itself, we can use a begin until loop, and inside there we can do nb read or nbread if you prefer. Uh, the address, the output address of here is integral. Nope, not that. Uh, we want to read network capacity. Oh, I'm going. I'm taking a walk. Um, uh, network capacity. There we go. And the until word will read the top value on the stack, and if it is not zero, it will branch back to begin and then loop back again. Um, so after the loop has happened, all it remains to do is um, query the integrator output here uh, using nbread again, and then put the uh, number of fluid droplets back on the stack, and then divide. Uh, the divide word takes the second to last element on the stack and divides it by the last element on the stack and puts the result on the stack, which we can then print using the dot word. And also let's add a helpful message. Um, edgy energy. The droplet. And there we go. So if we run the program again, recompile it, and press the button, we will see some delightful things happening. When that drops, didn't it? Yep, look at that. Absolutely marvellous. Energy per droplet, 90. Um, through the power of computer, we have revolutionised the world. Um, it really, it's, it's more fun to compute. Well, there you have it. A beautiful machine for a beautiful purpose. Another fantastic product from Northeast Electric and Petrochemical. Make sure to share it with your co-workers. Have a lovely night. Goodbye and thank you. And goodbye, Hugh. And thank bye. Good how good that it is